Well, Matt, went to a soccer game this weekend. The game ended in a damn tie, which is no place in sports. So it's time to talk about a sport that doesn't try to end in ties. Football. Hello, 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 and welcome to Updog Sports Talk. My name is Woo. Matt Miller. Next to me is the co-host and big-time Bills fan, Justin McGovern. What is going on, Justin? Well, Matt, went to a soccer game this weekend. The game ended in a damn tie, which is no place in sports. So it's time to talk about a sport that doesn't try to end in ties, football. And first up, we have the NFC West to talk about today. An absolutely loaded division. Can't wait to dive right in. Let's get going here with the Arizona Cardinals. Now, definitely the first thing that comes to mind with this team is just the offseason drama that surrounded this team. You know, the owner wasn't happy with Cliff and Kyler Murray after they had the embarrassing playoff loss, as he called it. There was definitely even questions about Cliff Kingsbury's job security. Then the Kyler Murray contract situation. He wanted a new contract. They were hesitant at first. Finally, they gave it to him. And even when he got the contract, there was drama around that. I mean, they're ready for some football. They're ready just to settle in here. Now, they have to deal with the DeAndre Hopkins suspension. I don't know how they're going to handle that. Um, I know they at least added Marquise Brown to kind of help with that a little bit. And he was teammates with Kyler Murray in college. So hopefully it shouldn't be a long adjusting period there. But definitely... They need to get some more guys involved. AJ Green's a little bit old at this point. Maybe Rondell Moore can hey, step up. Hey, he's still solid. Yeah. But I mean, AJ Green knows what offensively, he's doing. Though, offensively, though, they still have a solid offensive line. Like, it's not terrible. Yeah. Um, but with um, Hopkins out for six games, they're pretty light on receiver. They have Hollywood, and then they have AJ Green, and then Absolutely. nobody. <laughs> Yeah, they, I mean, they... Rondell, I'm sorry, Rondell Moore. Uh, sorry, I I missed him. Uh, but the rest of their uh wide receiver core not that deep after them. So, um, yeah, they uh they get an injury during uh Hopkins suspension, then it's it's over. Uh, you might yeah. as well just try to aim for a wild card because they're not gonna be able to keep up. <laughs> I and they they can't have a situation like what happened last year when pretty much in like a period of like four days they had like a bunch of valuable people in their offense get hurt. They can't have that yeah. happen again. And then obviously the running back is James Connor. He's pretty much unopposed at this point. Solid. I mean, he's very solid. He ran for a lot of touchdowns last year, and also was a threat out backfield catching the ball. That was unexpected, but. The question is, obviously, sometimes he isn't the most durable. He was durable last year, but will he be this year? There isn't much depth behind him. I mean, you know Benjamin's next on the depth chart, but we haven't really they seen They got Daryl Williams. He has experience. Yeah. He's mediocre at best, though. So, But yeah, not a yeah. solid backup. But uh, their defense, though, if J.J. Watt gets hurt, their defense sucks. Yeah. Chandler they don't Jones have anyone to pass a loss. Yeah, that was the biggest lo- They should have, like, gave him whatever money he wanted. <laughs> yeah, that, and it that took him back a whole step. Like, um, Isaiah Simmons had a solid year last year, but they're expecting more from him. And then yeah. um, Zayvon Collins, like, he, he took another step up, but he's, he's good. Um, yeah, he needs to stay healthy, though. Obviously, he was playing good until he got hurt last year. During the same four-day period that a lot of people in the offense got hurt. <laughs> yeah, but they only have, to me, they pretty much only have Baker and Murphy in the secondary. The rest are like, meh. Like, yeah, they're just okay. Yeah. So, like, secondary. I originally sent mark. you, I really, I probably should have sent you a different list after looking at their, their roster again <laughs> for, uh, but, for divisions. But, and overall, what this team needs to figure out is like, because every single year they start out so strong. They take the NFL by a storm. Kyler Murray looks, makes defenders look stupid. And then later, mid by mid-year, they all of a sudden start to fall off. And by the end of the year, they just outright struggle. And honestly, yeah. like if you look at Cliff Kingsbury's record, he starts out strong. Every, even when he's at Texas Tech, he started out strong and always ended bad. And what a lot of people say around the league is pretty much like 
they come out with like the same 12 plays. They catch the lead by a storm with these plays. And then everyone catches on to them. Can can he change as a person? I'm not sure he can. He's got to get more depth on his on his play sheet. Yeah, absolutely. I can't can't run out run out with the same twelve plays. Maybe there'll be yeah. one benefit of the DeAndre Hopkins suspension. Yeah, maybe. Well, let's uh, let's see who we who we got next. Well, up next, Matt, we have the previous defending Super Bowl champions, the Los Angeles Rams. Now, what a season they had. They finally made the move to get Matt Stafford in here, replaced Jared Goff, and first year for real quarterback, they went and won the Super Bowl. Now, Matt, um, since you're wearing all the Rams stuff there, I'm going to let you take this one away. Uh, what what did they do for an encore here, and what potential stumbling blocks do they have? Uh, Stafford has an elbow issue. McVay's not too concerned about it, but it seems like everybody in the media is, so... Uh... I could literally go 50-50 on that one. Um, I don't expect a whole lot from Matt Stafford, not like last year. Um, he'll probably still be solid, but, I mean, he's starting to get up there in age. Um, so he's really going to have to, like, be accurate with his throws. And I don't see as many downfield just wide-open touchdowns. Like, with that elbow injury could affect a lot of his throws. Um, but I mean, they still yeah. got solid receiving core. Allen Robinson, we haven't really seen much of him. Um, because Matt Nagy kind of ruined him and he did pretty well in Jacksonville, but um, but not being the number one option in the offense may help him, uh, just because Cooper Cup's going to get a lot of attention. Uh, Van Jefferson, I think he's going to be out for a couple weeks. Um, but man, that 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 guy can can play receiver. Uh, he's yeah. uh, to me, he's one of the more underrated receivers in the league. Like he's, he's not getting a whole lot of attention, but, um, Robinson cup and Jefferson, I think is a pretty good trio. Uh, OBJ is still out there. There's a chance that they could sign him back on, but, um, but as of the, as the roster stands right now, they're going to be run heavy. Um, they got Kyron Williams. They drafted him. Uh, Cam Akers is coming back off an of Achilles and, um, Daryl Henderson's still there. So uh, they're probably going to do running back trio, um, get Kyron Williams sometime when he gets back. But Cam Akers, if, if he's as explosive as he was last year, they got a good shot at this. Um, offensive line could use some help. Um, they're not quite oh, yeah. as good as last year, but yeah. like internally. Uh, they lost a few players. Higby to me is just just a solid tight end. Like he's not going to be the number one option in the offense, but he can block well and he's not a bad target in the passing game. But defensively, they lack pass rush. They still got Leonard Floyd and Aaron Donald, but Ashawn Robinson to me is not that good of a rusher. He's he's much better against the run. Uh, Bobby Wagner is a huge, huge addition to this defense after losing Von Miller. Um, so they're kind of sacrificing some uh, pass rush for better coverage. And then you can definitely see that with the rest of the secondary. Um, Nick Scott played well last year. Jordan Fuller played well last year. Jalen Ramsey is one of the best in the NFL. And Troy Hill, just a dog. Like this dog. is going to be a tough. This is going to be a tough team to beat, but just like a lot of teams in the league right now, it's going to come down to quarterback play. Is Stafford healthy enough to at least get the bare minimum to get them a win? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw a similar kind of uh, injury with the elbow there, Ben Roethlisberger, a few years ago, and he never really improved on it. He kind of struggled through the year and stuff. He even missed a couple games, but... So that, that definitely is a huge question mark for me. And the health of the running backs, too, because, I mean, Akers is still recovering. If he is back to full speed, he'll be really good. But it seems like so far this offseason, he's not quite there yet. Henderson is even fully recovered either. Um, and then I believe you even hinted that Williams is coming off of one, too. So Yeah, he got hurt, need... like, early, like, in rookie camp. Like, yeah, that one, that one just sucks. But he's ready to play. Um, I think he's going to be ready to go week one, but 
they said it could be a couple weeks into the season if he's not ready by week one. Right. And yeah, what I mean, Allen Robinson's the big mystery here because last year was just so terrible, but really, um, I mean, I I even know you count Justin Fields in this because Nagy mismanaged the situation so badly there, but Stafford is far and away like the best quarterback that Allen Robinson's ever played with in his career. He's had some terrible quarterbacks throughout his career. Yeah. I mean, he's had to deal with Blake, Blake Bortles, Bortles, Mitch um, Trubisky, not Eagles, Nick Foles, like, <laughs> yeah. He's been stuck with the worst. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll be very, very curious to see that. And, then, yeah, how they handle losing some pass rush this year will be interesting. This this yeah. team, though, I mean, we, they're, I mean, they're solid. defending Super Bowl champions. You know, like, they're easily a contender for the division. I mean, almost certainly will make the playoffs. It would be, like, Stafford's injury would have to be significantly worse for them to miss the playoffs. Right. That, and that's where I'm at. But Wolford knows the offense, and then Bryce Perkins in the preseason, like if they don't hang on to him, someone's going to pick him up because he he had a great showing in, in the week in week one preseason. I'm still cracking up that one point they were so done with golf that they actually start Wolford in the playoff game hey. that one year. <laughs> yeah, and he actually didn't do half bad, and then he, he just they, they just couldn't get it. But, um, yeah. Um, that's the like a strong year, though. Strong sure. year, but I I don't expect Super Bowl not unless McVeigh's got something it's, cooking. It's hard to repeat, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that doesn't happen there. What's your name's Tom the Brady Patriots or Bill Belichick? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we we had we managed both pieces there. Very well done. <laughs> yeah. Well, time to move on here to the San Francisco 49ers. This is another team that had a bit of a dramatic offseason. Maybe not quite as bad as the Cardinals, but the 49ers definitely had an interesting thing with Debo's contract situation. They finally resolved that. They're, I mean, pretty much in this closing press conference, Jimmy G said goodbye, guys. But because of an injury, it, he hasn't been traded yet. He's still there. I'm not exactly sure what he's been doing at camp. I think he just kind of throw some passes on his own on the sideline or something, but um, he probably just mumbles to himself, I need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> probably. He's just like, all right, come on now. Let, let someone trade for me. I want a new team. Um, you know, He's ready for the fresh start. And the 49ers are ready for a fresh start as well with Trey Lance, I believe. Trey Lance obviously has all the tools in the world, but he is still inexperienced and a bit raw. He's definitely a huge question mark for this team. Yeah, I think with all the changes they have going on, like they have a solid roster, but they lost um, Mike McDaniel, who was a run game coordinator, and a big reason why Debo had a huge year last year. Um, and then switching over to Trey Lance, if he doesn't, like they're going to almost need him to put up 300 yards and three or four touchdowns. Like that's a little unfair to ask of a guy like not, quite ready yet um elijah mitchell he balled last year but yeah. was it because of mike mcdaniel's plan or is kyle shanahan the reason why they they were so good now um, see another thing i want to add to the equation here is the 49ers had absolute maulers on the offensive line like trent williams even though still he's the up, best I in the nfl 34 year old this... old Best in the NFL, like, yeah. and they had the best right, one of the best right tackles in the NFL as well. Mike like, McGlinchey. Yeah, they are, they are so strong in the offensive line. They lost a couple people this, this off season, but like they weren't huge losses and they seem pretty confident in replacements. And honestly, like I, I think McDaniel had his own twist to the run game, but um, I mean, strong run games seem to follow the Shanahan family wherever they go. So yeah. I think, I think running the ball will still be their main their main way of attack, but it'll be Trey Lance hitting the big plays with Debo, with uh, Brandon Ayuk, who's not in the doghouse this year after he was for most of last year. George he Kittle, looked, obviously. He looks, he's looked good in camp. George Kittle, obviously, a tight end. You know, he's a stud. And another person who's looked good in camp, rook, third-round rookie Danny Gray. He's he's looked like he could make a huge impact in this offense. Maybe yeah, right now, Joe you know, Jennings is getting the nod over Gray, but uh, I don't see that happening for very long. Gray's been balling out. 
Yeah, not for long. Uh, he had a good performance. Not preseason games or preseason games, but he had a good performance in the preseason game too. Seems like him and him and Lance work well together. Yeah. Uh, defensively, though, they defensive line they're solid. They did just get a good second rounder, Drake Jackson, but I haven't heard much of him uh, in camp. But Nick Bosa and Fred Werner are the best. Uh, some of the best defense de- defensive players in the NFL. Like absolutely, they got they got some some people on this defense, but uh, linebackers outside of Warner, they're pretty thin. Um, and then uh, safety Jimmy Ward is going to be out for week one, um, possibly a couple weeks after that. But they did get uh, Traverius Ward. Yeah, that was a huge uh, so a addition, huge, I feel like, in the yeah. secondary. But, man, they got some work to do. Yeah, I do think they need to figure out what's going on with the pass rush because, like, Nick Boza obviously was as good as he was, but nobody he outside of him lot. could really get pressure on the quarterback last year. And, I mean, he was at, he was actually recovering from a torn ACL last year, too. So, honestly, putting up 15 and a half sacks – in that situation is pretty impressive, but they need someone else to step up besides him. Fred Warner, I'll just go ahead and say he's the best linebacker in the NFL right now. So he'll be a stud in the middle. There's definitely a lot of talent on this defense. Jason Ferret in the secondary is another guy that needs to stay healthy. But I mean, certainly overall, I feel like this team is still going to make the playoffs this year and is still or at least being contender for this division. NFC is kind of thin. They're like top heavy, so it's like, right. All the wild card teams could be anybody. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, and maybe not. I mean, this is the Bears, but this is the most loaded division in the NFC for sure. Yeah. And but at the same time, most interesting interesting thing is they all have to play each other, and they have to play the AFC West, which is a loaded division. So yeah, that'll be very interesting to see as the year goes on. At the very least, to get the NFC South to kind of lessen the blow. Who we got yeah, next? Definitely, this team is a contender for the playoffs. Now we have the Seattle Seahawks, and things are a lot different here now. For the first time since 2012, Russell Wilson is not the quarterback. They traded Russell Wilson this offseason. They definitely, at this point, they are in rebuilding mode. I mean, it looks like they're going to move forward. Move forward with Geno Smith as the quarterback. Drew Locke is there, but uh, Give him a Drew shot. Locke has not looked good so far. He is, yeah. But Gino, when he came in against the Rams, actually had a decent game. Yeah, he was okay, but obviously, clearly, but, I mean, being thrown in l- late in the game like that, uh, against a really good defense, like he he played pretty well, and then just started throwing picks because they were so far behind. Yeah, absolutely. So, and... um. Offensively, yeah. though, they got one of the best receiving cores, in my opinion, with Lockett and DK. Um, but outside of them, they, I mean, they got Marquise Goodwin, so that's a big plus. But um, offensive line, first time uh, <laughs> in quite a while that they've had a good offensive line. Russell um, Wilson has got to be so pissed. <laughs> I know. But, man, I like um, – Rashad or Rashad Penny and Kenneth Walker combo. Uh it's gonna they're gonna go old school football here and then just pound the rock quite often. Yeah, and Rashad Penny was just like out of nowhere late in the year. He all of a sudden went off. Like he was finally healthy and played super well. Now the question is how far into this season he actually stays healthy because health has been pretty much an issue for him ever since he's been in the NFL. But at the very least, if he's out, then Kenneth Walker is ready to step in and carry the load. Now, obviously, Chris yeah, Carson's but... no longer there, but I think Walker and Penny are uh, upgrade over that anyways. Oh, huge upgrade. Um, defensively, though, they're quite thin. They got, I mean, Artie Burns is your is one of your starters. He <laughs> didn't he, he didn't pan out. Um, they lost, uh, what's his name? DJ Reed. They lost DJ Reed in the offseason. And then um they got Quandry Diggs, who in my opinion, he's one of the most underrated safeties in the league. 
Yeah. Um, he's been there Jamal pretty much Adams, the whole time they've been hit struggling. Or miss. Yeah. He's, he's hit or miss. You're either going to get great plays out of him or you're going to get nothing. Yeah. I mean, he, he brings, you know, like blitzing and, and tackling ability like you don't normally see at the safety position, but he still isn't great in coverage. They he's did get Kobe Bryant from UC, so he's another yeah. underrated one. I think he's going to – I think it's going to take him a little bit to learn, but once he gets it, they got someone. Yeah, and then actually another guy they drafted in the fifth round, Tariq Wooden, a six foot four corner out of the Texas San Antonio Roadrunners, has been a guy they've kind of liked in camp so far. Woolen, I'm not sure what oh. impact he he will make this uh, year, but he has a lot of potential there. Right before this recording, they actually traded for uh, J.J. Ortega-Whiteside and gave up um, Ugo Amadi. Yeah. Uh, they, I mean, these are guys who probably weren't going to make the rosters on their respective teams that they were on. Yeah. So it'll be but interesting. It gives I mean, wide receiver Arcego, depth. Yeah, Arcega whiteside looked like a guy with some potential. Never panned out with the Eagles, so at least he gets a new, new chance here. We shall see how that works because, uh, I mean, he had opportunities with the Eagles, but it just never worked there. But Yeah, and then he got pushed so far down the depth chart that it was like, I think they should have kept him and traded Jalen Rager, but just me. <laughs> yeah, well, it that depends on who you can find suitors for. NFC West. Uh, who, who you got uh, division-wise? So in the division... We have we're we're disagreeing here a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean, I had to go with the Rams. Picks. I had to go. I had to go with the Rams. Um, if Stafford can play, like if he can get past the elbow thing, then they're they're not they're not losing this division. Forty uh, Niners to me just didn't have quite enough, um, but they still got a solid team. Uh, we'll see how Trey Lance does and um, how that team does without um, uh, Mike McDaniel's uh, big brain. Uh, Cardinals, I think they just keep taking steps back. They just keep getting rid of like defensive linemen and then getting older defensive linemen in and hoping that it helps, and it's it's not helping. Plus, I don't know. You you go against some of these offenses in this in this division, you can't. They're not going to keep up. Um, right. And then the Seahawks destined for CJ Stroud. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So I will say I think the 49ers might be the favorite to win the division this year. I the reason I picked them was I I actually looked at their schedule a little bit, and the one thing I noticed that really helps them out is despite the fact that the schedule overall is tough. They got a nice little opening slate. Like outside of the game against the Broncos and the Rams, the first six games are very favorable for the 49ers. That gives Trey Lance time to kind of adjust being an NFL starting quarterback. So that that will be helpful. That gives them time to get Jimmy Ward back healthy. So those are two huge keys for the 49ers. Also, Kyle Shanahan seems to have gotten the best of Sean McVay in the regular season. Now it changes when it comes to the playoffs. And I don't know how the 49ers are going to do in the playoffs. I think that might be where some of their weaknesses hit them harder. I think they might be a better regular season team than playoff team this year. But the Rams, obviously, still a really good team. I didn't have the winning the division, but certainly in the playoffs. And then the Cardinals, probably on the outside of the playoffs, honestly. I think just another late season fade probably will be in store for I them. think Kyler Murray is just going to need an MVP season. A what? I think Kyler Murray's going to need an MVP season. Yeah, absolutely. For them I to mean, do anything. He would need to be, he would need to be healthy all year, and Cliff Kingsbury just has to change. You know, they they have to add more than twelve plays in the offense, and then the Seahawks. I mean, yeah, like you said, they they actually, I mean, because there's some nice pieces on the roster, some nice young pieces for this year, this rebuilding year for the Seahawks. It, it's quite the advantage for them in this situation to have such a tough schedule because it means that they could end up winning less games than worse teams that go up against easier schedules. So 
Yeah. That could be a huge advantage for the Seahawks to acquire a better quarterback for next well, year. Plus, they have a decent, they have a bright future. They just need to upgrade the secondary, yeah. and the Rams aren't going to be around too much longer. Like they're going to have to go on the quarterback search here in a couple of years. Um, Cardinals really depends on what they do, and then the 49ers, they they got to start paying some of these guys, so they might have to let a couple people walk. Yeah, so, who knows? Seahawks might be back in a few years, but for now, cellar dwellers. <laughs> yep, yeah, they'll be at the bottom this year, but certainly, I think things look all right for them in the future. All right, uh, that is our NFC East, or no, NFC you put West. East, that, you put East was, at the top. That is an error there. <laughs> oh, this wow. Show. Oh no. Oh, we're terrible. Oh, my. Um. Other than your spelling error, uh, you got anything else? No, I have nothing. I mean, I shouldn't even say anymore after making that mistake. <laughs> yeah, um, Justin has officially been fired from uh, from these graphics. Um, we are now looking for someone to put graphics together for us. Um, but just in all seriousness, uh, go to um, all of our social media at Updog Sports Talk. That's TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, and then here on uh, YouTube, hit that um, the bell. Uh, get some notifications when we post. Uh, we love hearing from you guys, so reach out to us. And uh, all right, see you later, guys. Later. Football.